Forgive me, sir, but I really can't talk right now. Heed our call. Provide us with the knowledge which we, and by we I refer to Hastings, cannot acquire by our own resourcefulness. Voila! The finger of suspicion has pointed their way. Well, Hastings? Could be better. I seem to be at a dead end. Oh, Hastings, Hastings. Have you even tried to consult the all-knowing thing? Right, well. Don't think me rude.
Thank you, madam.
tractor, do you? Yes, please. On me way. I have a theory about the murder. What if it wasn't murder at all? Suicide. I know what you're thinking. I know it's difficult to commit suicide by self-strangulation. But what if Miss Stewart was choking on something like a chunk of apple or something? Are there any telegrams for me? I'll just check. Sorry, sir. Have you any duck rum? Nary a drop, I'm afraid. With trade being as slow as it is, nah, there's not much sense in restocking. Do you have the winch handle, eh, Matt Barrow? Winch handle? From my sailboat? Not bloody lightly. How are all my sails up and down? If you'll excuse me, Poirot, I have some business to attend to. Don't worry, I'll be around the hotel if you need me. Poirot, do you think a woman could have strangled Elena? In 1926, was the first woman to swim the English Channel. I believe she could strangle you with ease, especially if you ask such a nonsensical question. Then we should put all the women on the island to the test. Somehow. Very well. Like a ride to the island? Yes, please. Let's be off then. Is it true Mrs. Castle has seen you boats off the island? I suppose it must be. She spends hours up in the tower at the hotel. The invasion must be near then, just as they say in all the papers. Colonel Weston has the home guard on the alert. There is a favor you could do for Poirot. Would you be willing to help with an experiment? What kind of experiment? Would you be so kind as to open the jar for me, please? Ah, I see you mean to prove your theory that no woman would have the strength to strangle Madame Marshall. Can't do it, sir. It's on there ever so tight. Would you mind asking one of the ladies at the hotel to open it? Why a lady? Surely any of the sturdier gents could do it. Well, listings, this is your plan. What do you say to that? Tell her... Tell her you have a phobia about other men opening jars for you. What? Well, that is absurd. She will think Poirot is a lunatic. If you won't do it, I win my point. No woman could have throttled Arlena Marshall. Mademoiselle Gladys, I, oh, that is to say, I have the tiniest of phobias about other men opening jars for me. As unbelievable as that sounds. Oh, no, sir. I believe it. Coming from you, I'll give it a go. Who shall I have tried? Mademoiselle Brewster.
It is quite a These are the binoculars. It is quite a view, Hastings. These are the binoculars. Pardon, Hastings. These are the binoculars most splendid. These are the binoculars. These are the binoculars. No more me. There you are, sir. I thought you'd forgotten about me. When you didn't return, I decided I would test every woman in the hotel for you, just to be sure. I hope I didn't take too much on myself. Thank you very much, Mademoiselle Gladys. What did you find? I gave it to every woman on the island to try, and not one of them could budge it. That is, until I gave it to Miss Brewster. She popped it right open. Gosh, she's strong. Merci beaucoup, mademoiselle. You have done an excellent job. What should I do with the jar? It is yours. Take it as well with a sincere thanks of Hercule Poirot. Phobias must be a heavy burden to bear. Ebien Hastings, we progress most satisfactorily. The course now is to identify and to remove the red herrings that obscure our true path. Where have our investigations taken us? I will remind you of those moments I consider the most important. You, of course, must decide which pertain to the murder of Alina Stewart, which are additional crimes that, while they may have no bearing on the murder, must still be solved, and what we still must learn before all questions are answered and the guilty unmasked. Are you ready, mon ami? As ready as I'll ever be, I suppose. But could I have my sixth clue to the secret of the finger of suspicion first? But of course, the sixth clue is... Telephone. Telephone. Let's see what we have so far then. Power, lamp, desk, drawer, magnet, and now telephone. Thank you, Poirot. I am ready to hear what you consider important about what we've learned so far. First, what are the mysteries we are trying to unravel? The bird watcher, Mr. North. Yes, the report from Scotland Yard, which I hope you have read. He tells us he is the smuggler. But of what? Is he allied with the fifth communists? Or someone else? Bullets and Mr. Black. Yes, Monsieur Blatt is shot at, but fails to mention the fact. Shot at by whom? A German U-boat? If it were the authorities, I am sure Colonel Weston would have been informed. Yet he did not find the incident of sufficient interest to tell anyone. He even makes up the transparent lie of storm damage. Why? The ghost of Tom Cutter. The ghost who is not the ghost. Do you have any theories as to who that ghost might be? Mr. North. He would certainly seem to be the most likely candidate. 
voodoo on Sea Drift Island. Yes, and we have the indications it is being practiced here and by young Mrs. Marshall. The activities of fifth columnists. Yes, it seems clear that Mrs. Castle watches, but not in the name of England. The murder of Alice Corrigan. We know little of the details of this case. Only that the husband was implicated and cleared due to the unbreakable alibi. And this crime was committed near Brixham as well. It may yet prove to be connected to the Millie Parsons case. I thought the police proved that Fell couldn't have been the killer. There may be another connection, Hastings. Do not rule it out. The murder of Millie Parsons. We now know enough of the circumstances in the crime to point towards a killer with motive and opportunity. The anthropology instructor, Gideon Fell. And unless Mr. Fell is on Cedrit Island or in Leathercombe Bay in disguise, he is not a suspect in Elena Marshall's murder. Yet there were several persons who are intimately or peripherally involved in the case on Sea Drift Island. True. And two points remain to be cleared up. Can you name them? Is Linda Marshall involved in voodoo? The signs seem to point in that direction, I am afraid. Once we hear from Miss Porter and learn what Mademoiselle Marshall had in her puzzle box, we will have our final answers, I think. Was Gideon Fell the man you mentioned in your story of voodoo? The one who awakened in the night in the greatest of fear? Yes, it was he. Because of voodoo? Is it so hard to accept? If you accept that he himself believed in the power of voodoo? The murder of Arlena Marshall. Of primary importance. We will explore the possible suspects presently. But let us take a moment for motive. What are your thoughts on the reason Arlena Marshall was murdered? Jealousy. More than one person would have reason to object to her attentions to Mr. Redfern. Yes, all of these mysteries still be developed to greater or lesser degree. Now I will list the characters in our little drama. Do you believe that we can eliminate anyone from any of the mysteries we pursue? Colonel Weston. But of course, Colonel Weston is an old friend with the uncompromising belief in the rule of law. All of the above. Yes, Hastings, you can now dispense with the, uh, how you call them, uh, the players of the bits. Now we can focus on the true suspects. Now let us turn our attention to the more likely suspects. Which is your choice as murderer? Patrick Redford. Again, an obsession that Alina Marshall has decided to win. The lover's burn? Yet where is the opportunity? His movements are witnessed by many, including myself, until he set off in a robot with Mademoiselle Brousse. Christine Redfern. On the face of it, the most likely suspect. The jealousy for her is the most immediate and intense. Yet she too would seem to have the unimpeachable alibi according to Mademoiselle Marshall. Linda Marshall. Again, empathy. To protect him from the woman who makes him the cuckold in the eyes of all the world. Already she is attracted by the unhealthy interests. Already she knows the violence that can strike without one. Yet she would seem to have the unimpeachable alibi thanks to Madame Reffer. Horace Blatt. It is true that man has secrets. He would also have had the opportunity to sleep quietly ashore at Cutter's Cove and depart in his sailboat 
during the time of the murder. Major Barry? For Major Barry, a man who has lived through the violence of war, an obsession rebuffed by Madame Musher, may indeed have turned to more violence. Emily Brewster. The athletic Mademoiselle Brewster is a woman strong enough to strangle another, as your experiment proved? And we have not determined a sufficient alibi for her, I think. And yet, she is another like Mr. Black, par example, who apparently has no motive for the crime at all. Hillary Castle. Alina could have figured out that she was betraying her country. Self-preservation. I did not see among her many attractive qualities any indication that Mrs. Marshall possessed the instincts of a detective. Still, it is a possibility. Rosamond Darnley. The murder of empathy. To protect the man she truly loves. She is a strong woman who has succeeded in the business world. It is possible she would be capable of such an act. Carrie Gardner. Another who is hiding something? Would she strike down the woman who ruined her husband's business? Oakley Gardner. The likable Mr. Gardner, who takes so long to find the knitting wool, and who was ruined by Arlena Marshall? Stephen Lane. A man so consumed by his zealotry, he has lost his position as a minister.